Ugh. All right. So, I apologize that this video is coming out extremely late, like 10.56 as I'm doing this right now, on Sunday night. Um, but I did see Beware the Batman, I did see the, the pilot episode, Hunted, and, and that's why I'm here, obviously, because I'm here to talk about Beware the Batman, the first episode, my first impressions, but I apologize this video is coming out late, and I also apologize if I repeat a lot of stuff in this. And if I just sound extremely tired and half awake, it's because, well, I am extremely tired and half awake. This explains why this video is coming out on a Sunday as to a Saturday, the day that Beware the Batman premiered. Um, I, on Saturday morning, or on, or on uh, yeah, Saturday morning, the day that, that Beware the Batman was supposed to come out, I was up extremely late, um, and... By the time I wanted to go to bed, I, I figured that if I had gone to bed at that time, I would have never woken up to see Beware the Batman, so I just went, fuck it, I'll stay up the extra, uh, you know, hours, and I'll just wait for Beware the Batman. So I kind of pulled an Angry Joe, and just waited, and just pulled an all-nighter, but instead of being disappointed, I was extremely happy with what I was given, but I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so then I fell asleep, and I didn't wake up until, like, 7 in the afternoon, 7 p.m., pretty much nighttime. But then again, it's the summer, I didn't have anything else better to do, so cut me some slack. So, I stayed up, and I fell asleep till like 7, and I I just sort of figured, you know what, I'm not going to do the video tonight, I'll wait till tomorrow, that way it will give me a chance to think about what I just saw, and also so that I can watch the rerun of uh, Beware the Batman, the rerun the DC Nation episodes on Saturday, on Sunday, so I just said I'll just see it one more time on Sunday, and then I'll review it, I'll give you guys my first impressions here today. So that's why I'm here today, but I'm doing it now, because again, I just was up extremely late, I waited, and I waited, and I just saw it again, and I, and I fell asleep, and I didn't wake up till like, an hour ago, so nine, almost. So, I apologize, this video is coming out late, but you know, I'm here to do it right now, so let's do that. Before I get into actual, the Beware the Batman animated series, the first episode, you guys, my first impressions, I want to talk about the three previous uh, Batman animated cartoons, Batman uh, cartoon cartoons, that premiered before Batman, uh, Beware the Batman, the, the pr ones prior before, the ones prior to Beware the Batman, so, again, if I sound, if I mess up on my lines, I'm half asleep, so I apologize, um, but right now, before I get into Beware the Batman, I want to talk about the three previous Batman cartoons, so let's start with that first one, the uh, Batman the Animated Series, which is, in my eyes, my favorite form of Batman in any type of media, in cartoon series, in uh, uh, movies, in comic books. It is just by far my favorite Batman anything, in a cartoon anything. It's my favorite. It just is, has the perfect amount of everything that makes Batman awesome. Uh, the dark and brooding uh, realism, the goofy overall just tone that Batman can be associated with. I mean, he is a comic book character. It's just the perfect Batman animated series ever. It's great animation, great voice acting, the definitive Batman actor ever, Kevin Conroy, playing Batman, as well as the definitive voice actor, or just actor in general for the Joker, Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker himself. And it just has a legacy that still just stands today with the various Arkham games, or straight-to-DVD features, or just even animated series in it of itself. They will eventually come back and do little voices here and there for animated series and animated movies. It still is just a, a legacy that still holds up to this day. It's just my favorite Batman series of anything so far. And I will eventually do a Batman animated series full retrospective and review. But that's just my initial, just my thoughts on that. Um, now we, then after that we get to The Batman. That cartoon that premiered on like the like Kids WB, not even Cartoon Network. Uh... Um, that one, it, this happened many years after, uh, Batman the Animated Series. So, a lot of people really do hate this, and some people do really like it. I'm kind of in the middle, and I just feel, like, kind of neutral about it. My biggest problem with that series is that it just felt like, it, it just seemed to me that it was just trying really hard to be the next Batman the Animated Series. That's what it really just felt like to me. It just was trying to be Batman the Animated Series, and I kind of fell flat on its ass while doing that. Um, it definitely did have a lot of good stuff in it. There are a number of episodes I can recommend to you guys, such as the reintroduction of Harley Quinn, which was done all by Paul Dini, so it definitely did have a nice little stamp of approval 
or uh, that one episode that was just a giant tribute to The Dark Knight Returns with an older Batman in the future and stuff like that. That was really uh, a good episode. I don't, again, I don't know any of these episodes. I'm half awake and I can't remember any of these episodes off the top of my head. But it was a series that was trying to be something else. But it still was very decent. It's not horrible. That's the thing about Batman uh, animated series and Batman cartoons in general. None of them I've ever seen are absolutely horrible. They're all either at best decent. They're at it, they're, they're worst case scenario. These series are just decent at best, which is great. That's something that is, is amazing. I can still recommend the, the series to everybody. And I can still recommend a number of episodes to everybody. So the series isn't horrible, it just was trying to be something else that we would all rather just go see that instead of sit here and watch this. But there are a number of episodes I can definitely recommend to you guys. Um, just can't remember them off the top of my head. Maybe sometime I'll do like top 10, you know, best Batman, the Batman episodes. I hated that title, it was so confusing. Like when I ever say, oh hey, did you watch the Batman cartoon? People are always like, well, what do you mean? Batman the Animated Series? You were the Batman, that one Kids WB Batman? It's bad title. Um, but there's that. And then we get to Batman the Brave and the Bold, which you can make fun of Bat the Batman all you want, but at least that felt like, at least it was about Batman for a while until the Batman started just focus way too much on Batgirl and uh, Robin, and then it tried to be the next Justice League cartoon out of nowhere also. Um, at least it was about Batman for a while. The uh, Batman Brave and the Bold, to me, was never a show about Batman. And that really pissed me off because he is the first word in the title. Batman, colon, the Brave and the Bold. It, it was never a Batman show to me. That I never liked it. Um, it always felt like, you know, Batman's going to be there, but we're not going to focus on him. We're just going to uh, focus on the guest star, the guest star superhero of that week instead of on Batman. There was a few episodes where it definitely did focus on Batman, such as that one episode where he was um, hunting down Joe Chill, the man who killed uh, his parents. That's a great episode, by the way. Probably my favorite episode in that entire series. Definitely check it out. It's a must-see if you're a Batman fan of any kind. Um, but it it just never... It, again, it just focused way too much on the guest star superhero of that week. Like, oh, hey, we're going to focus on Green Lantern or Blue Beetle and not uh, on Batman. That really pissed me off. It was never a Batman show. If I were the creator of that show, what I would have done was just called it The Brave and the Bold and just made it and just focused it on... DC DC combo characters in general, and not just on Batman teaming up with the new superhero that week. Just have a new superhero that week, and just have him do his own thing. You know, like Plastic Man this week, Batman the next week, Superman that that, that next week. Not have Batman team up with that superhero, and have uh, that superhero take all the spotlight. Or else, what's the point of having Batman there? You might as well take him away. So that was just one that I never really liked all that much, but I do definitely respect it in a lot of ways. Because it's just a nice little send-up to all the uh, fans of the more campier, more, you know, goofy Batman. He even wears the blue suit like Adam West from the 1966 Batman show, which was awesome. Um, and it's just a nice send-up to fans of the 60s Batman show, the Sillier Batman. Or even fans of just the, the Silver Age comics, which is very, very nice. Um... Again, it's definitely, I still recommend it to certain fans of Batman, just certain fans of comic books in general, but um, there, I, it just, is, just it, it wasn't my kind of Batman that I liked. I like the more darker, more awesome Batman, but I still do like some of the episodes in it. There are a number of episodes I can recommend, like that one I just recommended like a minute ago, and there's another episode, Nights of Tomorrow, which has Damian Wayne Robin, and here's the kicker. Nightwing or Robin, the original Robin as Batman. That's a must see for anybody. I'm not sure. It's kind of up in the air which one is my favorite episode, that or that one. Just, it's an awesome episode. So, uh, I, I definitely can recommend it to certain fans, but all fans of Batman probably wouldn't like it all that much. But, um, I like it to a point. Um, but it was, you know, it just wasn't my cup of tea, pretty much. It just wasn't my Batman, but that's it. But now we finally get to Beware the Batman, the brand new animated Batman series. Uh, it's premiered on Cartoon Network on the DC Nation block along with Teen Titans Go. Ugh. But, um, my overall, uh, well, 
Before I get into my overall thoughts, this had a lot of skeptic skepticism going into it. Even before Young Justice and Green Lantern was cancelled, which I definitely did think add fuel to the fire when hating Bat Beware the Batman. Um, this did still had a lot of criticism even before Young Justice and uh, Green Lantern was cancelled. Um, just not a whole, there was just a lot of weird decisions that were going into it. A lot, of, uh, I definitely was very skeptic, skeptical myself, which says a lot, seeing as how this is a Batman cartoon. But I was still going to definitely check this out because one, it's Batman, and two, it's Batman. I have to watch it. And again, Batman cartoons before were never absolutely horrible. Worst case scenario, they were decent at best. Um, it, yeah, worst case scenario, they were decent. Um,. So, I definitely was still going to check this out, even with the skepticism, and even with the few things that I did not like going into this. Um, there were a lot of weird decisions that I wish they had gone without, such as it being a CGI animated series. I, I hate CGI as a form of animation, and I just think, both in movies and in cartoons, it's just a lazier, more cheaper way of getting around things. I just like... I like 2D animation a lot more, mostly because I just, I'm more used to it, and it just pays off a lot more. Like, it's a lot more easier to do CGI animation. Like, I'm not saying that it's entirely easy, like, anyone can do it, I can do it. It's very, it's still very hard. I've never tried it before, but even I know it's hard. Um, but it just seems a lot more easier compared to 2D animation. In my opinion, 2D animation just pays off more, and it just just looks well. And CGI animation, to me, it just all looks the same. Like, every single CGI animated cartoon looks the same to me. Um, 2D animation, there it looks it's like a variety of 2D animation. If you're doing 2D animation, it just looks so diff. It looks very stylistic, and it looks very different uh, from other 2D animated shows. CGI animated series, it just all look the same to me. It just doesn't look new. It just looks very, very old and used. Um, 2D animation, I'm just, I just much more prefer, and that is one thing about Beware the Batman that I really don't like so far. Um, nothing says that it needs to be a CGI animated cartoon. Like, with Green Lantern, you can argue that, well, he has the power ring, and he can just, you know, make a bunch of these weird, you know, little stuff, and it's an alien, it's a space opera, it's a space show. Uh, and you can just, you know, have all these weird, crazy aliens. That's why it's CGI. Here, nothing screams out why it has to be CGI. This could have been easily a 2D animated show, and we all would have been happier for it. But I do, I do, in a way, like it because, well, I, I'm already used to it because I, I didn't like the CGI animation for Green Lantern, and I still got used to that, so I'm not exactly extremely mad about the CGI for, uh, CGI animation for Beware the Batman, so... Um, I like the CGI because I'm already used to it because I already got used to uh, Green Lantern's animation. Um, but I would have much preferred that it was 2D animation. Again, nothing says that this needs to be a CG animated show. Um, another thing that I was also skepti uh, skeptical about was uh, Alfred, which in the first like promo shot of the series, you had Alfred using guns. He was like a gun-toting butler, which was kind of a cool idea, but sort of made you think... If Alfred is using guns, if Batman is letting Alfred use guns and helping him out on his cru uh, crusade of crime, Batman might as well already use guns. Batman might as well just use guns if he's going to let someone that he knows use guns. And we all know Batman never used guns. Unless Tim Burton is directing a movie, or he's in the late 30s, early 40s. But that was not at all relevant here. Batman is not being done by Tim Burton here, and is not in the late 30s, early 40s. So... Why let Alfred use guns? That's really, really stupid. And don't worry, and be beware the bad in this first episode. He's not using guns, and I don't think he's going to be using guns for the rest of the series. I think that was just some concept art that they got rid of, because they thought it was a really stupid idea. So don't worry about that. Um, I was also very skeptical about Katana, which is Batman's new sidekick in this show, uh, who is a female ninja who is also a character in the comics. Why not just Robin? Everyone knows Batman and Robin. It's like the greatest, most well-known you know, comic book duo ever, why change that up? I just, and it's not because I'm sexist or anything, there was female Robin, Carrie Kelly, and I do respect that character, but just why, you know, Katana, I just, I don't really like that all that much, and she's also his new bodyguard in this, um, so that is kind of cool, I guess, but, you know, I really would have just preferred Robin, I mean, it just seems like they're getting rid of a lot of stuff that we all know Batman for in this, but, you know, I just didn't really like that, like, why not Robin, or just Nightwing, at least, who knows? Um, but, 
One thing that I did completely agree with and was the other thing that was keeping me akin to the show and was the only only thing that was going to make, one of the only other things that was going to make me watch the show besides it being Batman was the choice of villains, um, which was the, the show is not going to have the Joker or the Catwoman or the Penguin or the Riddler or any big villains. Um, and you're probably saying, you know, to me right now, you're probably already typing at your keyboard saying, you know, Oh, one, two, three movies rule, that's sacrilegious, we thought you were a Batman fan. Well, I am. But their reasoning behind not using big villains like the Joker, Catwoman, Penguin, etc. Uh, is because, you know, we've seen many times over and over these villains done, and we already understand why these v villains are great characters and why we either love them or we hate them. So we want to bring some of the lesser-known Batman villains to the forefront and explain why you should love these villains and why they should be considered great characters. I thought that was a great idea. It definitely did. Uh, I thought it was a great idea because they have a great point. We've seen the Joker done a billion other times before. We've seen Catwoman done a billion other times before. We've seen the Penguin done a billion other times before. We know why they're great characters, so instead of just retreading all the other Batman shows and just retreading what uh, everything else and having the criticism that, oh, it's just like everything other everything else Batman related, let's change it up a little bit and add the lesser known villains to the forefront, explain why you should like these characters. That was a great idea. As much as I love the Joker and I think he's a great character and a great contrast to Batman and one of the best villains ever, if not the best villain ever, he is a bit overused in Batman media. So having there will be lesser known villains, I am completely acceptable about and I completely agree with the creator's decision to do that. But when I heard that they were doing that, what I had thought was, oh awesome, they're doing the lesser known villains like Hush or Black Mask or Clayface. I can't wait to see what they do with those villains. And then I learned that they were doing lesser-known villains like Professor Pig and Mr. Toad. And then my reaction towards that was, who the fuck are they? I mean, come on. You pretty much said that to yourself when you heard that news. You pretty much just asked, who are they? I don't know who those people are. Which I guess is the point. You're not supposed to know these villains because, well, they're doing lesser-known villains. But I really thought they were just going with, like, the villains that comic book fans know, but, like, adults and small children don't know. Like Black Mask and, you know, Clayface and all those people. I thought they were going with villains like that, but no, they're going with the really damn obscure villains. Like either villains that were made a while ago and just disappeared into comic book obscurity, or villains that are way too new to even be heard of. That's kind of... It's good, like, but I was really looking forward to seeing how they do other Batman villains that I know, but I am completely acceptable about doing these villains. And who knows? Who says that those villains aren't going to be there? Who says that they're not going to use Hush or Black Mask or whatever? I personally think that they will eventually have to get to those villains. Or hell, who says that they might not use the Joker sometime soon? I mean, it's a Batman show, and a lot of people will probably say, we want to see the Joker, and they probably will say, you know what, how about we just do one special episode where the Joker's going to be in it? You know, who knows? I mean, maybe sometime down the line, they'll change their minds. Ideas do mature, so who knows? Maybe they will eventually get to those villains in, like, a nice little special, like, one-hour episode or one-hour season premiere, one-hour series, uh, se you know, season finale. Who knows? Um, but th that was one of the things that was kind of strange when I first heard about the show. I thought they were doing, like, the cool lesser-known villains, like Black Mask and so on and so forth. But now they're doing the completely obscure lesser-known villains, like Professor Pig and Mr. Toad, which... The, the villains in here, um, I didn't expect them to immediately grab me and immediately be amazing, uh, you know, uh, villains. Um, what they are, how, the way they are done in here are very, very, uh, I guess, you know, good in a way. Um, there really isn't much to say about it. There's a, I can't really say a whole lot about them. You know, they are done, you know, okay, pretty much. Just okay villains so far, but I didn't expect them to immediately wow me from the beginning because, again... This is the first episode, they will have to catch on, and they will have to, you know, get better as time goes on, so, uh, I didn't expect them to wow me from the beginning, so, you know, the, the villains so far are just okay, but I really do hope that the villains do get, you know, better as they go on, and they do show you why these villains are good villains, and why they pick these villains. So there is that. Um, and then we get to, uh, well... Another thing, uh, going back to the skepticism, another thing that I was also very skeptical about was the violence, which 
What I mean by that is, um, due to the uh, Dark Knight Rises Aurora shooting last year, which will be exactly one year later in like six days, which is very tragic. Um, I uh, the the creators pretty much said that they were going to tone down the violence in the show. That they were going to, you know, make the make the guns, for example, uh, a little bit more unrealistic looking and a little bit more kid friendly, as kid friendly as you can, you know, them being guns, um, which was definitely something that they did show in this. Like right from the beginning, uh, the guns in the show are like very unrealistic looking. Like they're like ones like red and ones like uh, yellow, and they shoot out lasers and stuff like that. Um, that is one thing that they did show here. When I first heard that they were doing that, I immediately thought that they were, that this was going to be like. Ah, uh, it's going to be a kitty, stupid, silly show, and just like Teen Titans Go, but it actually wasn't. It was actually very, very dark and actually kind of violent, but I don't mean like, oh my god, there was too much violence, it's not safe for kids. I mean, uh, I mean, it has like a lot of action and like a lot of, uh, like just the perfect amount of action in it. And again, it is the first episode. Um, so I did very, very much like that. Also, going back to the whole gun thing, um, well, th th I'm talking about the opening, um, I couldn't help but feel that there was, like, one little, two, actually, two little throwbacks to Batman the Animated Series. Um, well, actually, the new, the, when Batman the Animated Series was retailed, the new Batman Adventures, which, when the animation uh, turned to the uh, Superman the Animated Series animation, it had, like, Nightwing and, you know, all that. Um, the titles for the episodes popped up in, the, like, white and they had, like, the little air quotes around the, the title, which, like, say a title was... Well, the title here is, like, Hunted, and have the, it's, it's in white, and they had the little air quotes. That was the exact same way that the titles for the new Batman Adventure episodes popped up. Like, there was, like, white title. Like, say, like, the episode was called Batman. It says Batman in white, and the air quotes were around it. Couldn't help but feel that was, like, a nice little throwback to, to those episodes. Um, and if that's not enough for you, uh, the, uh, right off the bat, the first thing that happens in this episode is that Batman stops two thugs, two, uh, from robbing a bank. Oh, gee, what does that remind me of? It reminds me of the opening of Batman the Animated Series, where Batman is stopping those two guys from robbing a bank. But they don't rob a bank and then they blow up a bank. That's kind of weird. Like, why didn't you steal the money to blow up a bank? Anyways... Couldn't help but feel that that was nice. Those are two nice little throwbacks to uh, Batman the Animated Series. That was really awesome. But to actually get into the actual episode a little bit more, and this might not even be um, uh, throwbacks. Maybe I'm just uh, theorizing. Maybe I'm just being a, a complete conspiracy nut. But who knows? Uh, maybe they were. Maybe they weren't. But either way, it was it was kind of cool. Maybe you can say that they were nice little throwbacks. But anyways, getting to more of the episode. The episode overall, my first impressions. I'm really, really, really excited for what they're doing with this series. And, and, and something that I really like is that it's not trying to be like a previous Batman animated series, which I was very much looking for in this episode. I was like, okay, well, what's different about it? Well, there's a lot of things. One, the animation, again, CGI. This is the first official CGI animated Batman cartoon series, so that is kind of nice. Um... So, it just has, like, a lot of stuff that is just completely different from most Batman animated shows, uh, such as Alfred, for example, which is the big drawing point for the series, which completely makes it a lot more different from pretty much anything Batman-related. Um, I like that movies now, uh, Batman movies and TV shows and comics or whatever these days, are actually making Alfred a really awesome, really... Like, a character with, like, an actual past and, like, an actual story. Like, he's not just there just to say, oh, you know, here's your team, Master Wayne, or here's your bat suit ready to go, Master Wayne, or I ready up the Batmobile, Master Wayne. He actually has a story. He actually has kind of a point to be here. Movies like, you know, Batman Begins, Dark Knight, Dark Knight Rises, they did that exactly, too, where they gave Bat out for the past, and he was actually there to have emotional support for Batman, and he actually helped out both Bruce Wayne and Batman. I really did like that. And he's not just here because, oh, well, every other show has Alfred got through Alfred in here. Alfred in this show is a fucking badass, okay? Here's where I was just like, Alfred is a fucking badass. He is an ex-MI6 agent. I want to repeat that again. The butler. The fucking butler from Batman is an MI6 agent. Alfred rolls with James Bond. Alfred rolls with James Bond. That is a fact now. A fact. I know, I know MI6 is real, but that's awesome.
That is awesome. And it only, it does make a lot of sense why he would be working with the Waynes. Like, maybe Thomas and Martha Wayne one day are like, you know, if we ever, you know, we have no other relatives to watch Bruce if we die, so let's hire a complete badass to protect him and both to raise him as his own son. It would, does make sense. He would, they would raise a complete badass to raise their son in case Bruce Wayne ever gets in any trouble. And, you know, to protect him. It does make sense. Um, and he's awesome. And he really wants to help out Batman in this. And he's, he's you know... And that's something I did like about this episode overall. It, uh, you know, Bruce Wayne has to learn that Alfred is there not only to uh, help Bruce Wayne, but also Batman. That's something that I really do, you know. And Bruce Wayne has to learn that, you know, Batman and Bruce Wayne are the same person. They're not different. They are the same. Which does make Bruce Wayne kind of stupid a little bit. Like, Bruce Wayne, I think you're a little bit smarter to realize that Batman and Bruce Wayne are the same person. Does Bruce Wayne dress up in a bat suit? Yes, he does. That's why they're the same, idiot. But that was a nice little... You know, message, nice little symbolic, you know, little message that I did, like, that Bruce Wayne learned, learned in this. That was really, really cool. Alfred is a total awesome badass in this. I want to see an Alfred spinoff series. That's just how badass they made him in this. Um, and Captain Lo I think someone, I think Captain Logan and, and, and how he felt about, uh, Beware the Batman, he said that he did look like Hitman. Or someone, someone said, uh, that, that Alfred did look like Hitman from the game, Hitman. He definitely does, and he's probably as badass as that guy. So, that was something that was awesome. This Alfred was a total badass, and he's not just there just to be there because, well, every other show has, you know, every other Batman show has Alfred in it. We have to have Alfred in it. He actually is the point of the plot, which is awesome because it's Alfred. Making Alfred a part of the plot and actually giving him character, actually giving him a past and developing him as a character, that's awesome. And he does kind of get replaced by the end of this because, well, his leg gets, his ankle gets broken and he introduced, they introduced Katana, who's again Batman's new sidekick. Um, again, I would have liked if they had used Robin, but, um, again, I haven't seen what this character is capable of doing. I haven't seen anything that this character has done. So maybe they'll give us a reason why this character is here instead of Robin. Like they gave us a reason why Alfred is total badass instead of just making him a pointless character as he's been before. Uh, I don't know. So I am really, really excited about that. That looks really, really uh, awesome. Would have liked if they had used Robin, but hey, new Batman cartoon. I haven't seen what she's done yet, so who knows. Um, so overall, Beware the Batman, uh, which I love that title, by the way. It's a great title. New Batman title, not just rehashing, you know, other Batman titles. It's a true, true, true fact, by the way. Beware the Batman. Also, break your neck. I don't know. Uh, no, Superman will break your neck. He'll just break your collarbone. Uh, but anyways... Beware the Batman so far, I am extremely excited about. I can't wait to see what they're going to do in future episodes. I can't wait to see some of the villains that they're going to do. Uh, the animation, will you probably will have to get used to, but definitely don't write the series off so far because of the animation. Um, I am really excited to see what they're doing so far with the series. I'm really happy with what they're doing so far with the series. Can't wait to see what else they're doing. If I had to give this episode a rating, probably give it like a nice little 8 out of 10. A very, very enthusiastic 8 out of 10. Definitely do check it out. Uh, and I'm just ha I'm just really excited that and happy that we have a new Batman show. That's awesome. We have a new Batman animated show. It's about Batman. That's great. And that's awesome. I'm so happy now that I can tune in and finally wake up early on Saturday mornings again and watch Batman. That's awesome. I haven't woken up early on Saturday morning since Young Justice. That's awesome now. It was kind of awkward going back and watching DC Nation. I felt kind of betrayed, but it felt very, very kind of awkward watching it again. It's like... I, it's like Meeting a girlfriend that you cheat that cheated on you. It's like very very awkward very very familiar But anyways, uh, beware the Batman definitely check it out. And those are my thoughts my first impressions on it um, So definitely check it out. Highly recommend it to Batman fans. I'll see you guys soon. I'm gonna pass out and go to bed. So see ya